to then share with you uh, through the YouTube channel. Okay, so it's, everything is done. I think it's uh, time and we can start at 35 and people will join us eventually. It doesn't matter. We should start, I suppose. So welcome everyone, please. Reshma, please introduce ma'am. Yeah. Uh, welcome everyone. This is our session three for GEG Pune and uh, it is very exciting today for me uh, and everyone, all of us, because we have a special guest, Ms. Sangeeta Gulati, and uh, she is going to teach us excellent things that probably we have never seen and that is really going to help us into uh, our classrooms. So um, uh, I think uh, I can say a lot about Ms. Sangeeta Gulati, but I will give her the time. And uh, Ms. Sangeeta Gulati, please let us uh, tell us something about yourself and uh, you may take over the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reshma and Dr. Varya. Uh, the initiative taken by you for uh, the Google educators, because this is a Google educator group. So this is for Google educators uh, who possibly can learn from uh, each one's experience. So it's my pleasure. Uh, to be here among all of you to share some of my experiences, some of my learnings and the tool that we have as uh, G Suite opens up for us. There is so much that one has, can learn and do that every time you uh, open up the G Suite and try something, there's something to learn. So it's a pleasure for me to present at this session so that as I uh, share, I learn. And that is the beauty of any of such events. So very uh, uh, grateful to you for starting this movement uh, for educators in Pune. But now today in the chat, I could see there are uh, educators from Tamil Nadu and also from Rajkot, Gujarat. So you are reaching out to teachers all across India. So congratulations to you for taking forward this effort. And and Thank I you. And I would like to maybe Miss Sangeeta, ma'am, might not uh, tell you this, but she is a, a Google trainer and an innovator from India, which is like long back. Probably I didn't know what GEG was, but she is already way ahead in this uh, stream. Right. Thank you, Grishma. Um, yes, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, one that it doesn't really matter when you start. Uh, as long as you start and you initiate something and you take people along with you uh, and you make a difference, I think that's always a good point to start. Uh, yes, my journey started uh, several years back and uh, I've been uh, playing with, uh, I call myself to be just playing with technology for quite a number of years. It's been my passion and uh, so in fact in 2011 when I got Fulbright scholarship uh, I and that was a Fulbright Distinguished Award, I actually worked on using technology for teaching and learning of mathematics. So I'm primarily a maths teacher. I head the maths department at uh, Sanskriti School in New Delhi. And uh, over the years, I have gained experience and I have enjoyed sharing uh, whatever I learned. And that is what matters. So here I am. I'm a National ICT Awardee 2016. And uh, with Google, the journey started formally in 2014. Uh, when for the very first time, uh, Google Teacher Academy was opened. And in fact, so far, the only time the Google Teacher Academy was opened for Indian and uh, uh, neighbor, uh, neighboring countries in India, in uh, Gurugram office. So that was uh, very exciting because we got to uh, get, you know, hands-on training from experts. Uh, of course, the selection process at that time was very different. Uh, and we had to send out our applications, send out our um, uh, video showcasing what we have done. So all of that was done in 2014. And 2014, December, I uh, earned my Certified Innovator badge. But in 2015, uh, Google changed the format and they brought in these uh, certifications, which uh, we are asking everyone to try out because they are brilliant. They give you a lot of learning to happen. So the L1, L2, these are now the minimum qualifications you need uh, before you go ahead with any other uh, bigger certification. So my journey kind of went in a reverse direction, but I'm happy it, uh, because it gave me quite a lead and uh, I still had uh, tried to get my L1 and L2. And so I am L1 and L2 certified. I am then 
uh, didn't want to just leave at that because I've been training teachers. So I said, well, why not? Let's get certified as well. So I earned my certified trainer badge actually just last year. So, but I've been training teachers for a good five years plus. So it is really not about the badge, but it is about the experience and the learning. The training center, teacher training center has excellent modules. Every time you go through those lessons, you have something new to learn. So definitely that's been my journey, but I've uh, also celebrating my 30 years of uh, teaching mathematics in this particular year when uh, the tables have turned completely and we are all uh, learning all over again as to how we teach our students and connect with our students. So I think I would like to take this forward and at the end we would again have a chat session where if you still have any questions about me, uh, please feel free and I have my Twitter handle and my uh, Gmail up on slide. You can connect with me through that and I'll be very happy to support anyone and everyone uh, who may feel uh, that uh, need. So uh, today's session, as uh, Reshma said, is about slides. We've been uh, using Google Slides. What I'm presenting right now is a part of our deck of slides. So Google Slides is one of the apps of G Suite, which we uh, use mainly as a presentation app. But today, I thought, let's look at it a little closely and see what are the other things. Uh, you may be familiar with some of them. You may not be familiar with them. So we are going to take a look at some of the, um, as I would call it, tips and tricks of Google Slides and what else you can do with the slides. So the very first thing that we often uh, don't uh, think about is there are people who are just starting on this journey and therefore, uh, you know, it's not fair to just jump into the tips and tricks and go to the bigger uh, things, but just refresh ourselves as to where do we start? Where are these Google Slides? So yes, they are very much in your Google Drive. So you just have to recognize the icon, open the Google Drive, look for the plus sign. The plus sign in Google environment is always to indicate that this is which if you click, you would be able to create something new. So go ahead, you can try doing that and uh, you will be able to then look for that yellow icon. You can always start with an untitled presentation, which is a blank presentation, or you can use a template. But I always encourage teachers to use a blank template because then you can create something of your own. And that is where you get started. But if you want to be a little smarter because time matters, right? So if you want to be smarter and not go through the drive, although I would recommend that you go through drive because then the path would be you will have a folder and inside the folder you will have the slides. That is important so that you can have work organized in Google Drive. But a shortcut would be to go to slides.google.com. So you can just type in slides.google.com in the Omnibox and you would be able to get started with the entire set of slides that you have. So it, you'll actually see all your slides as well as blank and the template. And one shortcut that you may not have seen or tried, which you can try right now if you're sitting on a device, a bigger device than a phone, is to type in just simply slides.new. So in the Omnibox, if you just type in slides.new, you would be able to get started with a new slide. So this is something which you can do on the go as and where and it would start you with a new slide in your account. Of course, you need to be signed in with your G Suite account. And now once you have the slide, what can one do in it? So let's talk about a few features uh, which would help you. One of the things that um, you would find is, as I said, we are here to talk about what more can you do, is that not everything need to be a presentation. Use slides for creativity. So give students a chance to create with slides. So what can one do in that process is to look at the possibility of changing the page setup. So the page setup usually is a, a regular rectangular size, which could be a wide screen, could be in the wide screen. Also, it is 16 by 10 or it is a standard 4 is to 3. But there is also a choice of custom. 
So when you go to custom, you can actually choose the page size. And usually when we want to print something, uh, you would go for an A4. So A4 page size is approximately 8 by 11. So you can use that as an understanding of how you can get. So I'm going to just give you a demo of that as well so that we can not only just watch, but we can also try these ideas alongside. So for that, I'm going to open my uh, login here. I am on my Google page. This is what we call as Omnibox. And here is where I'm going to type in slides.new. Now, because I use that so frequently, you can see that jumping up right there. And the moment I say slides.new and I press enter, I would be able to get started with a blank presentation. See how quick this is? Of course, you have to organize. So you can go back and put this in the right respective folder. But this is how your slides can get started. Once the slides have started, I think every document that you start in Google, uh, whether it is a doc or a sheet, it always starts as an untitled. And the very first thing you must do is to give a title to that document. Otherwise, there will be lots of untitled files in your drive and you would not know uh, which one is what, right? So let's call it lesson one. So I'm making some slides for lesson one. And here is our deck now ready to get started. Now, in this case, suppose I want to give a template perhaps to the students to create some poster and I want it to look like an A4 so size page or I need to create. So the kind of content that one can create with a A4 size could be a poster, something like this. You may want them to draw or construct, create an infographics or even an ebook. How about an ebook? You can have that created very nicely, easily in Google Slides because it's very easy to move objects in Google Slides. You can also create images or a certain newsletter. There's so much that you want to share with your students nowadays. So why not start a newsletter and you create that in Google Slides? So to do that, what do we have to do? Come to the slides, go to file, page setup, and then here is right now the size showing is widescreen, 16 is to 9. I'm going to go to custom and it shows in inches. Inches goes well for us. We can type in 8 and it's actually 8.75 or 8.35 and by 11 something. I'm taking approximately 8 by 11. And the moment I say apply, you can see it has turned into an A4 size page. And then you can change the layout. You can start with just a blank page or you want to give up title page and then you are ready to get started. Right. So that's your tip one for today. Try play with the page setup and try to give chance to students to create different kind of content and you can create different kind of content for your students. So that's something which in case you had already used, we would definitely love to hear from you. How have you used uh, this idea and how have uh, it worked for you? The other tip that we have is there is an insert menu in the Google Slides. And there are options of inserting images and you have text, but you also have audio. So inserting audio in Google Slides is one of the best uh, way right now if you wish to share content with your students. All you have to do is use your phone, record a narration, right? You have something very important to discuss with your students. Maybe a question which they are going wrong with and you want to explain it to them. But you don't want to spend too much time in creating a proper four, three minutes video. So what do you do? You record yourself on the phone and then in the slide, you can put the content. I'm going to change this back to my orientation that was earlier. And then here, if you go to insert, take a look image, text box, and audio. What you can do with the audio is that this audio comes from your drive. It cannot be a file from somewhere else. So record it maybe using your phone 
put that audio recording in your Google Drive. And you know G Suite for Education brings unlimited storage. So you don't have to worry about how much space it is occupying, right? And therefore, you can just pick an audio from the Google, from your drive, select it, and then click. The moment you do that, now this audio file has got attached. Now this audio file, you can make it visible. If you don't want it, you can uh, hide it. But here, if you want it to be played by clicking, that has to show. If you want it to go automatically, then you can hide the icon when presenting. So you are, can play with these settings, which open up on the right panel because the speaker icon was selected. If I select, I get this format options. Otherwise, I don't get to see that, right? Remember to do that. And now, if it has been, you have selected, and you can even loop audio. So one of my way that I use it is, at times, I put a little music, especially when I do workshops. Today, I didn't do that. But sometime when I'm doing workshops, the waiting period, you want to start off, so when you maybe want to try with your class, maybe when they are still joining in, put a little nice music, uh, find some good music and there are sources like Ben Sound where you can download free, royalty free music. That music can be added at the back of the slide. And now what happens? Take a look. So I want it to uh, happen or play automatically. The moment I put the present, the slides get presented. Did you know that you can insert audios in Google Slides? So make your presentation more lively by inserting audios. As a teacher, how would you like to use this feature? Let's think and share. So as of now, I had not put any title, so it went blank here. But that is what happened. I was not speaking. It was my recording which was speaking. And that is how easy it would be for you to perhaps share your content. You can explain the content that is on the slides and you can have that shared with your students. So yes, do share with us in the chat how would you like to use audio in Google Slides if you start using it with your students or otherwise. So that's something for you to try. But remember, you have to have the audio recording in your drive. And in the drive, the settings of the file must be anyone with the link can view. It doesn't say here, but anyone with the link can view. Those settings must be there. Then when you use or share these slides with your students, you would be able to uh, get the content going. Videos are playing a huge role in our life, right? We are using videos, we are watching videos, we are sending out videos to our students, uh, and then we are perhaps attaching them in Google Classroom. We are also sharing them through the different other mediums. But there are very excellent uh, videos, you know, available on YouTube. And they could be 20 minutes long, they could be 15 minutes long, or they could be even 8 minutes long, but the content that you want to share with a student is only 2 minutes long. So do you want to really want the children to watch the entire video? I don't think so. So what can one do is simply this. You can use the option of inserting videos in Google Slides. And then there is an option of formatting. You can choose what time the video plays and what time it stops. So that's an excellent option for you to share content with your students. And we are going to take a look at that very quickly as to how one can do that. So here I am. I'm going to choose a, maybe a blank slide as the layout. Go back to insert and then video. So again, you must watch that video first because you must know uh, whether it is suitable for your children or not. So I'm a maths teacher, right? So all my keywords goes maths. So in teachers, and I know this channel very well. It's an excellent one to share with your students, but it's an 11 minutes long video. Do I really want my students to watch 11 minutes? May not be. So if I have this video inserted and I have that highlighted, that means it is selected, right? Watch this. 
then you can choose the settings what time do you want the video to start and stop so i can click on this and i can see where it is going so i can choose exactly the time where it is starting look at this little button here of use current time right so wherever it is use current time i'll click on that now the video will start at 1 minus 30 second then i see that my content is very well explained till this particular time so i Stopped listen to that you. and i stop the video exactly where the explanation stops and then i say use current time once you do that your 11 minutes long video has now become actually the suitable length and the content is getting delivered you can also choose auto play when presenting in case the audio is not good and but the animations are great you want to mute audio you can choose to do that once these settings are done then we can now go back and uh, see how it looks so once you present this screen the video will start playing on its own and you can see that i have not clicked on the play button of the video the video will play and then it will stop exactly at the time that i have selected so this is a great way again to share content with the students because what can one do one tip coming your way you can add another slide following it and here you can add some questions based on the video that the students were supposed to watch in the previous slide so when you are giving content to the students to see at home you can do this you can split that video into parts not give the full 11 or 13 minutes video in one go but split them in parts insert slides in between and have more content added in that would add value to that video and the lesson would be delivered in a better way than what we would do if i just give the video to the student so this is again a very simple idea that you can try and see if it's uh, working well for you so we talked about audios videos and then there is still so much more collaborative work so when we are looking at uh, using g suite one of the main power of uh, google uh, is collaboration so i always uh, say that there are three things that i uh, refer to three c's that i refer to when i think about google so it is uh, great for communication it's great for collaboration and it is great for creativity so you can have students create collaborate and connect through google uh, apps so when you are making collaborative work things can get very chaotic right if you have 30 students in class and i share this deck with the, all of them to work on it can get chaotic so what's the way one can organize ourselves is perhaps link give them some direction so i can put the name of all the students so let's have reshma as one of my students so here is the slide for reshma but reshma will have to go through if i even go alphabetically well reshma is going to come further down the line right so how will reshma find her slide is if i take my first slide and i turn it into a content maybe add another slide here title slide can remain there i can then add a table inside this and then link the names with the slide i'm going to showcase only for reshma so if i am looking at reshma's name being put here then i can link this text box with the slide that i have created so select the text box link insert link you can always link the content to a web content we do that all the time that's again hyperlinking that you are familiar with but did you know that you can actually link it to the slides in this presentation so when you click on slides you would be able to see so i can find the i can link it with the next slide or i can link it with the last slide and i will apply so when reshma gets these slides all she will have to do is click on her name 
and then she will be able to see that content coming in click on the last slide and she jumps right into the slide where she has to work this works well when you have a large class and you want them to stay organized and uh, work together so that they know which slide they have to get uh, again a time saver when you are doing it in a classroom situation so that's something for you to try out and see if it works for you another time saver is import slides because we are creating content so many many times so much maybe i need the same content i created earlier into this slide so how do we do that copy paste definitely but why copy paste when there are more efficient method so find import slides and you can get to see all the text that you had created you can choose some keywords so suppose i want to choose the slide deck i'm using right now i'll open that and then from there i will be able to find the slides which i need to insert so if i wish to for example my title slide if i use that here it comes and gets inserted so it would be just as simple as that of shifting so every formatting that i had of that slide comes back in this if i don't want it i can change it or i can keep it as it is again a time saver tip for you to try out so that the work that you are creating is uh, uh, getting a more and more efficient slides and when we think about slides then there is explore so do you use explore so explore is a feature of google docs explore you can find in slides as well so explore feature of uh, slides is something very very helpful uh, for maybe two things that we will showcase right now one for the web search and the other is for formatting so when you are looking at any deck that you have opened so i'm going to just maybe open a new deck and create or delete this so that it doesn't come in the way and then we are looking at uh, creating a new lesson right we want to create a new lesson and here suppose i am working on a lesson which i want to share with the students so if i'm putting together maybe a chapter on uh, monuments right so let's say taj mahal so i'm writing a chapter or making slides on taj mahal then in that situation what would i like to do i want to get some content in this slides right so if i click on maybe a blank slide click on plus or you choose a particular one i have a slide here look for this little plus sign right at the bottom every deck would have that if you click on that then it will give you some themes layouts but there is also explore right under that there is something called as search your docs and the web if you put any keywords there you would be able to do the google search right within the google slides so i'm going to type in just taj mahal and the moment i do that i would be able to search the web images and even the drive content so let's first look for some images so if you click on images all these beautiful images pop up the moment you take the cursor closer hover over that there is a plus sign right click on the plus sign and the image will get inserted in your slide so no downloading of the content needed you don't need to download that picture one it's not uh, uh, safe because the copyright issues might be there when you insert pictures like this it's hyperlink it's giving the credit and we want to teach our students this right you can always resize the image bring it somewhere here and uh, then maybe look for some text right you can add another text box if you wish to or you can keep the format as it is so i want to add some content to this particular slide so here i we can choose the text box and create a text box here now where do i go for the content i can go into the web and all these links are opening up for taj mahal i can open up one of the channels or one of the websites that you are familiar with or it is authenticated and you can uh, look for 
the content. So history channel, yes, definitely it's credible source. You can choose some content which is uh, relevant to your uh, slides that you are making for your lesson. Copy that, come back here and you can paste that content. So you can definitely be able to get that uh, content added in. So I didn't get to paste that. Maybe it didn't copy it correctly. So I'm just going to try and copy and then come back here and then do the paste. There it goes. Again, formatting is always a concern, right? We always try to make our uh, slides pleasing. And for that, what you can always do is, again, use the Explorer. Click on Explore and see how beautifully, without any hassle, the layout of the slide is changing. Teach this tip to your students. Ask them to create beautiful slides and have content uh, created and shared so that you, know, you have a lot of repository of resources collected through the students as well. Give them a chance to try this, which is uh, not time consuming exercise, yet brings up their creativity. You know, they would love to bring something like this, which is very professional. And they can add title and add more content to that. They'll feel very pleased with the way uh, that their work is looking because that matters. And when you are making lessons, try this without any effort. You would have beautiful professional looking slides ready for you. So explore feature is something that you must try. Uh, the slides, the today's slides would be shared with you. And uh, there is an excellent uh, video that just came up by Edwin90. Uh, uh, that's a Google for Education uh, videos that come up for teachers. And you would be able to see the same high idea highlighted. So this video was up uh, uh, just two or three days back. Another great tip. How do you share slides with your students or with other colleagues? or with the teachers in your district? How do you share the content? So one of the tips that I'm here to share is publish to the web. So you can publish your slides to the web. What does that mean? It just turns into a link which would, can be easily shared where the teachers or students can only view the content. But it is like a play in the presentation mode, not in the editing mode or not in the tiled mode. So let's take a look at how we can publish the files to the web. All you have to do is go to file menu. Under the file menu, you can find publish to the web. When you do that, you have two options. You can publish as a link or you can also get an embed code. So if you have a website of yours, you can actually take that code and embed it into your website. If not, then just copy that link. You can make a short URL if you would like to, and then share that with your students. So this link doesn't need a login. As I'm showing here, in an incognito window, if I put that link, then that link would just let the slides start. And uh, I have kept the settings as 10 or 15 seconds, and every 10 or 15 seconds, the slides would change. So that is the beauty of publish to the web. So hopefully you would be able to try that. A close look here coming up. This is the deck we just made. I may cross this so that you can stay focused. Go to file, look right there, so many options. Right there you would be able to find publish to the web. Click on publish to the web. You get a link every three seconds is the uh, default setting. You can change it to 10 seconds or 5 seconds and then publish. You can also select that the slideshow starts and then you have that link ready. The moment you copy this link and then test it for yourself. Always test before you share the content. Go to an incognito window because no sign in is there. Right. And copy paste that link and test whether the slides are um, opening up or not. So no worry about the content uh, in terms of uh, the settings of the file. But yes, do remember 
if you had added an audio recording in this or any other content has been linked with the slides uh, you have to make sure the settings of those content is that anyone with a link can view otherwise they will not be able to access all the content of your slides right so hopefully this is something which you can use how i use it is and in fact all my friends at school use it is every presentation that we use for our lessons nowadays is are shared through this method uh, the link is posted in the google classroom and they can view it as and when uh, they feel like moving ahead uh, there is also as i talked about creativity so we do have uh, five minutes uh, may i just check again with the uh, Rishma, ma'am. Yes, 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 ma'am. Please continue. Yeah, please continue. Right. So we are looking at uh, creation, right? So let's talk about creating some beautiful activities to engage students uh, using Google Slides. You don't need to go too fancy about it, but take a look at what you have on the slide right now. The drag and drop activities are very engaging for students. Right. So we have given them, maybe you are already uh, giving them links of some websites where uh, the children are asked uh, that certain tasks, whether it is younger kids who are doing the sorting activities, right? They sort uh, shapes, perhaps, or colors, or a slightly higher level students where uh, they are perhaps uh, creating, as in this case, a certain timeline. You can ask them to uh, create such drag and drop activities or you can create these drag and drop activities for the students and share it through the Google Classroom. So I want to spend five minutes demonstrating how one can create uh, something like this without too much of an effort, uh, just simply using Google Slides. It can be also done through Google Drawings but it does work beautifully with slides. So let's do a short demo of how one can create uh, such drag and drop activities, right? So I hope you're all ready to go with it. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, yes. So here I am. I'm going to start first with a blank slide. And uh, let's take the layout to be blank. I want to change the background. So I'm going to go to background and I'm going to change the color of the background. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, see, let's put a green color. You can also insert an image. So uh, for example, if you want them to label uh, certain um, maybe organs, right? So if there is a digestive system and then you want them to label that digestive system, you can find the right image that can go in the background, right? You can also, uh, I think somebody might be on, so if that can be muted. Thank you. So you can choose an image in the background. I think Dr. Waria, sorry. Yes. Um, Dr. Waria, your mic is on. If you can mute it, it's echoing. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we can change the color or you can even insert an image in the background. So right now I'm just taking the color and I'm going to put that done. And here I'm going to create this uh, basic timeline. So what one can do, lots of tools are available here. I'm going to use the arrow tool. And here I can draw this arrow, right? Change the thickness of the arrow. So let's say four point. If you want bigger, thicker, you can take 12 points. You can even choose the end point. What does the end look like? Something like this. This can be done, right? And then we want to put some marks here to indicate the... Uh, kind of timeline stops so I can have some small segments drawn here one segment drawn just copy and paste and maybe I can have four of them done here for the demo purpose and then drag it and put them in certain places that you want 
So right now I'm just uh, showcasing the timeline, but then you can get thinking about how you would use it uh, for maybe labeling. We have a lot of these labeling activities, uh, geography and history. You have a lot of maps. So you can have the map inserted the way I'm doing it right now, image inserted either in the background or just as I'm showing right now here, put these little markers. And now I want to also add some more content. So I'm going to use the shape tool and I like these rounded ends the rectangle. I can put that little uh, rectangle here and uh, maybe type in uh, 2000, let's say 2000 to 2020 lifetime line I want to make. I can change the color of this. Let's change this to a little bluish uh, background. And then all I have to do is copy this and then paste maybe three more times. And then I can drag and put them there. So again, right now I'm creating the background on which the timeline activity would be created. So these are going to be the things which students will not be able to move. The idea is that when you give content to the students, which is in this present state, they will be able to move everything around, which would spoil the entire exercise, right? So here is what I have as the background. And over this, I want to put some movable objects, could be images, could be text box. But this is the background that I need. What one can do, as we said earlier, you can actually take so many options that are available here, choose what kind of option you have in, under the download. And as you look here, there is an option of downloading it as an image and only the current slide, right? So either as a JPEG format or as a PNG format, you can download this image I like PNG, so I'm going to just call it lesson one, and that uh, image gets downloaded on my system. What am I going to do with this image? Well, take a look. I'm going to just add another blank slide. And now in the background, I'm going to choose the option of choose image. In the initial part, I had changed the color of the background. Now I'm adding an image which I have created but if you want to go a different way, you can choose to have the image either which is captured by your camera, it's available in your Google Photos, or it is in the drive or through the image search. Right now, I'm going to just drag this image and bring it here. You don't even have to go through browse if it is an image that you know is present somewhere very closely. And you can see it popping up in the background. Click on done. And now note the difference between the slide three. Here I could click, I could drag each one of them. I could delete everything. You know, if I give it to the students, this might happen. They might just click and delete. What happens now? Nothing is moving. I cannot change anything here. And so what happens now? This is the background over which now you can either insert some images just as in this example you saw. So I uh, took the example of creating a timeline of technology, some kind of tools, and then you insert these images, which can be resized and it, they can be tracked. If not that, you can always use, again, use shapes rather than text box, because shapes would give you an option of uh, some variety as place marks and there is a color fill. So it is very uh, easy for students to observe that, yes, this is what I have to click on and drag and drop somewhere. So I can have a certain uh, object listed out here or, you know, whatever uh, name or labels you have. So a certain text can be added in here and you can uh, give it a different font if you want. You can put a color background. You can reduce the text size so that it's fitting in well. So these are the features or you know possibilities that you have which you can use uh, just to make this more appealing and more conspicuous for the students. But they can be placed randomly across the screen. And the best would be to get images. Uh, maybe you are creating a timeline of uh, maybe history of 
mathematics or maybe of a certain uh, uh, lesson in history and you want them to put them in a certain order so put all these content ready played around and also don't forget the slides when you give to students to play you can give them the option of using these gray areas as well so you can have a lot of such content added in which the students will have to just drag and then drop that is a way that you can create such activities no matter what level of students you are teaching it could be kindergarten it could be the grade 12 students but you would find that you can have lot of content maybe a simple equation right you want them to solve a simple uh, equation when you are introducing algebra to your younger uh, maybe grade 6 and 7 kids and you can give them certain numbers and uh, some plus and minus signs equal to signs and tell them to create or the solution you can also teach them that they can duplicate these symbols so if you have one image highlighted but you want it to be for more uh, uh, used in number of other places they can just copy and then paste and they would get more of this there are beautiful ideas shared by edtech experts uh, which you would find on web where for english there is something called as magnetic poetry right so you can find some uh, lot of ideas or text given in small shapes like this and children are asked to create poetry or a story using those let the words that are given along with that slide so they can just drag and drop them and create their own um, story for you and share uh, their creativity with all of you so i hope these ideas are appealing to you and you will be ready to try create this content with your students and for your students and of course lot of effort is saved by certain beautiful websites which allow you to create beautiful content so today the deck i am using is from slides carnival but uh, i am a big fan of slides mania as well and slides go so these are three websites i use very often where you can pick a template and then modify it add content for yourself and uh, in no time you would find that you will have some beautiful ideas and the content ready because the uh, appeal of the slides is important especially now when your students are looking at uh, that uh, for reference so hopefully these ideas have given you and inspired you to start working on it but this is coming in because reshma ma'am told me to think about it so this is from reshma but as a teacher teaching students and teaching educators uh, no work is complete no session is complete till you practice it so this is my little homework for you for today before we get into the uh, chat and q and a uh pick up your phones if you have them around or if you are on the phone take a picture of this homework create slides use explore to insert images text change the template layout insert video set its start and stop time publish that deck of slides do not share the link with anyone can view etc publish that slide find the link of that and then share that link maybe go to bitly or any other website which you might use to shorten the url and then share it with gg pune uh, i think you have a whatsapp group or any other way of reaching out or you can even send it to uh, me the link or with any other query so i hope you all have taken a picture of the homework that has come up for you and uh, you will be able to share this content with us so thank you so much for your time and i hope um, these ideas have helped you but we are happy to do a little bit of chat discuss if you want me to revisit anything or ask any questions uh, definitely and do note this little short link this is uh, the link for the slides that i have used today uh you can access all of them back again if you want to revisit the uh, instructions or those little gifs that have been added in to give you the step by step view of how you can do what i have talked about so it's just bit.ly that's called bitly 
uh, forward slash slides with capital S, S and G. So S, G is for Sangeeta Gulati so that you remember me. And of course, we are talking about slides. Thank you. And over to Rehma and Dr. Varya. Brilliant, ma'am. Brilliant. So nice to have you on board with such wonderful ideas and concepts. We have been learning this for the first time. I'm really much impressed and I'm so motivated to implement this in, at my school with my staff members and my students. A very big thank you to you, ma'am. Thank you very much for this session. Reshma, thank to you. you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ms. Sangeeta. That was like a complete uh, brain dump, I would say. So much information and uh, to actually uh, create more, uh, I would say, like, uh, I just got so excited. I started making the slides along with you because I didn't want to miss anything. So, but we have uh, some questions and our audience was excellent. They were putting up questions. So uh, I would let uh, people who have questions uh, to yeah, ask. I've the you have I've perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's yeah. let's uh, put up the question that we got question, in the chat. Uh, by Nayan Shah, sir. That is it possible to limit video view while sending it directly in classroom as material? The question is something, ma'am, that uh, you showed us in the presentation that we, you can paste a video. You can start from one point and you can end at one point. But if one wants to directly share the video to the classroom, can we have that limitations? Uh, no, unfortunately, we cannot do that. So right. we cannot. So that is where the slides comes to our rescue. You can just make one slide, add the video, start and stop time, and then share that. That's it. Yeah, sharing. So another query is from Tariq uh, Masood. Uh, when videos are played in Hangout Meet, there there's a sound disturbance when it's played through Drive. Is there any method to hear proper sound when video is played through Drive? This is question. Uh, yes. Uh, whenever we play, uh, you know, audio and video, uh, there is always certain problem. So there is an option of when you click on present now, there is a Chrome tab. You can present your entire screen or you can present a window and then there is a present through the Chrome tab. So okay. Chrome tab is preferred for playing anything which has an animation or an audio or video. So you have to look at that person. So play it through a Chrome tab, not as a present your entire screen. Great, great. This is, I think, great tip. And Tariq, I think you are sorted with this answer. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to record other questions. Being I, I did uh, I did some of them. Yes, I noted down some of the more questions. So yeah. uh, there is another question is that uh, uh, the question that some of them asked was, can we collaborate with the students while we are presenting? So if I'm presenting my uh, slide and I want students to collaborate along with it and drag and drop, how should we do that? Right. Now, drag and drop activity uh, can only be done or used when it is not in the present mode. Because when you present, then you cannot drag and drop the objects. So the file has to be not in the present mode. But what you can always do is uh, you can share the slide. So I'm just going to open my presentation again and uh, show you that it has to be in a tiled mode where you will be able to see um, sorry uh, was that a question or some noise came in it was just a noise i think okay so uh, when you select uh, when you're looking at uh, the use of the drag and drop activity it cannot be in the present mode uh, what you can do is you can have the slides created and uh, then share the slides with your students. You can allocate different slides to different teams even. And in the tiled mode, you would be able to. So if I go into the tiled mode like this, then I would be able to see the student uh, working on them and uh, dragging and dropping. So. The drag and dra drop uh, activity doesn't work if I have it in the present mode. Because in the present mode like this right now, I would not be able to move the objects. It has to be in the raw form as in this. 
so in that case you can use the uh, file with the, the class with share you know editing or if it is in google classroom then anyone can edit those kind of settings can be used give the teams a particular slide and you can actually watch them doing it in the live time so that can be done while you are doing your meet uh, sessions as well uh, thank you ms sangeeta uh, that was an excellent tip actually uh, especially for yeah. teachers where they want to do some activities with the class and at the last moment they are not able to figure out what what, what happened but they were prepared so uh, one yeah. more last question that i see here is uh, ms ms narjit wanted to ask you that can we have a live recording in the slides or do we have to record it first um, our our uh, session uh, sorry our video and then only we can upload it yes you have to have it through the card. it cannot be done live you cannot add something which is coming in live you have to have the recording ready uh, if it is audio recording then you should do your audio recording move it to the google drive change the setting that anyone with the link can view and then add in if it is a video then also add it into your drive and then from the drive put the video into the google slides thank you um, everyone those who joined if there is any more questions please uh, okay. this is the Rishma, time ms pangita is here yes yeah. i would i would rather suggest reshma we don't have much time to take up the question sessions and i will just okay. quickly post the uh, link for uh, the feedback form mm -hmm. on the, onto the chat uh -huh. box so that uh, may i ask one question please yes please yes please namita ma'am please please yeah good evening ma'am this is namita rotra and uh, thank you so much for giving us such useful tips uh, but i have some uh, related questions one is that you said uh, a beautiful thing that you can allocate the slide to each child of the class so that was something new to learn so two questions related to that one that if uh, i am allocating the slide will the other children be able to see the slides or only that child will when they scroll down this is one and second you also just said that we can share each slide to a child so how to do that i mean uh, is yeah. even that is possible sharing one slide allocating to a single child so these two things are very new no no you cannot uh, share allocate means you can to designate that team one will work on the slide four the sharing settings of the slides cannot be individual in a deck that cannot be done the entire deck would be shared it's just a classroom management tip that you would say that the team 1 will work on slide 4 and team 2 will work on slide 3 so you can have those kind of um, allocation done but you can't change the sharing settings so they will be able to see each other's work and uh, if again uh, with the children if they want to uh, you know disturb the others uh, work that definitely concern would still be there okay. thank you so much ma'am and one more thing uh, that we learned that was so beautiful amazing which is not there in ppts when you do was that you were saying that we can uh, embed the video on the website and we can uh, uh, share the link which is something new which is not there in ppts so ma'am can we also transfer the same our ppt to the youtube also there like uh, uh, like you made we make the ppt you should uh, told us that we can share the link directly or uh, we can share it to the website also you said there is one embedded uh, option there yeah right so even the youtube is possible because like i am a youtuber i am making my own channel So if I make PPT, so can I post it there? So I have my own channel. So can I do that? So you are recording over the slides. Is that okay. what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Recording, finishing, and then uploading on YouTube. Possible or not? So YouTube videos can always be added into the Google Slides sites. Sites, not the slides. Google Sites. Uh, no, no, ma'am. That I know. Again, let me just ask a question again. Reframe it. Sorry. Uh, what I'm saying is, like you have told us now, how you can insert your audio in the video. Okay, so I made one lesson. I inserted my audio. I have completed it. So, is it a possibility to directly export it to the YouTube, like we are doing it for the website, the way you taught us? Right. So, if you have done the audio recording, added it into a Google slide, right? Okay. So, when you have that, you will have to publish that slide to the web. and then only you will get the html code 
which you can embed. So okay. that you can add into your Google Sites. But if you want to put it in the YouTube video or you upload it to the YouTube, then you will have to upload that recording to the YouTube. So you'll have to turn the slides into a video format in one way or other. It Perfect. won't be uploaded directly. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so that option which is now there in Microsoft PowerPoint to export a file and turn it into a video, is it there in Google Slides also? No, not yet. No, not yet. No, not yet. Thank you so much, ma'am. You were amazing, awesome. And everything was so crystal clear. I hope everyone agrees with that. I'm just, Reshma, I have done a little bit of thinking from your side. We can carry on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Namita. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, thank you, ma'am. And uh, I would request all of you to just come uh, live for a while. I would like to have all of us picture uh, and to be shared on our. And Miss Varya, we can and Dr. Varya, we can actually have the tiled uh, show, right? Yeah, the Google it's, Meet. It's I would, I would generally, I would uh, so humbly request everyone to please, uh, you know, switch on their video so that I can take a picture. Yeah, so many great updates from uh, Google Meet. So let's try to use one and take our tiled picture with Miss Sangeeta. That's a very yeah. rare opportunity. And I, 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 I wish she comes to our session yeah. often. It will be very glad to have our uh, you know, image next to Sangeeta, ma'am. So <laughs> let's have it all. So there are a few more left out. Please uh, switch on the videos so that we can just take a click, quick click. Yeah. And share some of the pictures if you have taken any with us. <laughs> yes, yes, everything will be shared. And obviously this, this is for the sharing purpose anyway. Yeah. Lovely having a meeting everybody here. And I see some of my colleagues have also joined in. So from my school also, I can see some of the names here. <laughs> so that's lovely. It was excellent, Miss Sangeeta, and we we uh, will really like to learn a lot of things from you. Whenever you, uh, we will uh, try to touch base often. Sure. And sure. That that's the beauty of Google Educators Group. So GET is great for uh, educators and uh, for us to build up the community and to connect and share and learn with each other. So it will always be a pleasure to come back to this uh, panel and. Uh, do some sharing and learning together. Great. We are honored with this statement, ma'am. Yeah. Thank right. you for it. Thank you. Any last comments? Sorry? Any last comments? For the I meeting? wanted to celebrate, but you said wait. So we yeah. will do it next time. Exactly. So we just have our informal, but I would like to tell everyone that uh, Dr. Varya is now Google Educator Level 2. He did this exam last week and he passed. Yeah. And uh, so it is very exciting. Me and Dr. Varya are taking up the trainer course now. So anybody, everyone who is here, do try level one. Start with level one and it just gets exciting. So congratulations, Dr. Varya. And we would like to celebrate everyone who uh, accomplishes. Tell us about your achievement. So we will talk more about it in our next informal meet. Yes, yes. Do, do tell us, do let us know about your achievements. Uh, it's, uh, it will be an honor for us to honor you. So it is, and uh, whenever you fill up any forms for, uh, you know, any kind of certification from Google, they have an option, you know, from where did you get this uh, concept? So do, do mention Get Pune. I will be honored for that. Yeah. So uh, anything else, Reshma? Oh, I think Reshma has left the meeting. Uh, yeah, sorry, she's back. Reshma, anything else left out now? Are we you know, sure to conclude? You're muted. We are sure to conclude. I just tried uh, uh, celebrating uh, you some confetti here on the oh. screen. <laughs> so I was just locked out, but that's all. That's fine. That's fine. Anyway, thank you one and all to join in this wonderful session by Sangeeta ma'am. Sangeeta ma'am, you, you have all the applause for you. You have really inspired us, ignited us with your wonderful tips. And uh, we would like to know, uh, we love to have more of the training from your side. And uh, we are so glad that you mentioned that you would be happy to join us back for any other topics. So here we are concluding this session. Uh, again, one and all, thank you very much for your time and patience for today's session. So do share us 
the homework that uh, Sangeeta ma'am has given to us. Don't forget to tag Gag Pune in that. Uh, you can get back to us for any kind of doubts. You can even contact this, uh, contact Sangeeta ma'am directly uh, on her email or Twitter account. And uh, that's all. We all are teachers. So please contribute your learning to your community. Do share with your colleagues. Uh, motivate others, motivate each other, and learn and collaborate. That's all what we can say. Thank you very much. And we can now uh, leave the meeting. Uh, the meeting stands over right now. We can continue leaving the meeting. I'll be the last person to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Varya and Darishma. See you again. Bye. All the best yeah. to everyone. Thank Bye. you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Gilati.